Right, good morning, guys. We are coming at you with a another Q and A. I obviously put out some questions the other day uh, on the Instagram. Uh, I like doing that. I think it's a really good way to interact. Uh, now, be present. Obviously, be able to get the questions that are most relative at this point in time. Um, it's almost immediate, so I rounded up a fair few of your questions. I'm going to run through many of them now and uh we're just going to basically see what answers i come up with i haven't read any of these questions yet so this is all basically off the dome um that's how i like to answer questions because then i find you get the most true uh insight to the the person who you're asking the questions to because you're going to get like the honest answer um without being able to um you know uh evaluate those questions and plot an answer that's perhaps sounds great but isn't true to myself is not really how I like to do things I'd much rather hear it reply you'll probably hear the best of me and the worst of me um, but it is what it is so we're gonna be doing this like I say uh, this is like a once a week thing and then I'll be releasing these like once a week on the YouTube um, I try and make it Mondays and then training footage hopefully uh, like a Thursday or a Friday so we have a rotation obviously these I'm filming from the middle of New York so you have to bear with me because I have to get on the jet and uh do some traveling and it's quite expensive um as you can see this is super high-end production um this room alone uh with this reflective floor cost me pretty much a year's salary so uh you know understand that you know i'm doing this for you guys all right love you all <laughs> all right anyway let's get straight into it let's get some questions going um i'm gonna start and i'm gonna try and read out the people who have sent the questions i've only got instagram handles so bear with me um because obviously I took these off of Q&A on Instagram. So let's uh, have a sip and then let's uh, get started. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's start with Josh Vaughan, 97. His question is, favorite movement for biceps? Um, I'll be honest with you. Probably, uh, we have a piece of equipment at King's Gym, Mitchum. We have the Prime... Uh, preacher bicep curl with the unilateral handles uh, they're on swivets uh, swivets swivels not pivots swivels uh, so you can literally independently rotate your wrist to a comfortable position that allows you to get the most contraction out of your bicep so if you're someone who's got limited range of motion you can just go as far as you can if it be that or if it be that me personally i'm not overly flexible so you know that kind of be ideal so you're able to get that um good contraction on the bicep you can also do a hammer curl variation on there as well because of the, the way that the handle spins but for biceps i think that's the one i felt most it's in a few of my older videos and training when i've been in mitchum so if you want to check that out have a look at any of my videos that are based in mitchum some of the prep videos from last year early into the prep for olympia um great piece of kit don't see it a lot in gyms i have to say i've seen a lot of prime kit in gyms but not often the bicep curl so i'm really happy that we have one of those within the King's Gym uh, environment. All right, Taylor uh, MacDono, uh, I think that's how it's pronounced that. Best way to approach a deload week. So whenever I've taken like a deload week, it's not like a scheduled thing and it's not a programmed thing. Mine's very kind of instinctively taken. But what I will do is I'll um, reduce the load I use by a good margin. I will hold back a couple of reps per set so i.e. what you'd call reps in reserve maybe two or so um and i'd also uh limit the amount of sets that i do to being maybe one to two tops typically i do two to three working sets in a workout anyway so i might scale back on some exercises to like one if it's a big work a big exercise you know like if i'm squatting um you know incline barbell pressing i might just do one set a uh, couple of reps in reserve 30% of my total workload that I like to usually use and basically just do that kind of approach on all exercises during the week. Uh, I'd also suggest limiting how many body parts you train in a workout if you're doing a deload perhaps. Maybe even split it a little bit more bro split so there's less stress on the body over the course of a week um, in individual sessions because obviously when you train a lot of body parts in a session the demand for recovery is pretty high so you could always just go, let's go bro, let's do biceps on Monday, triceps on Tuesday, legs, uh, quads on, I don't know, Wednesday, blah, 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 just break it down. I'm not saying you have to do exactly like that, but you get the concept. Limit the amount of work that you're doing on those given days. Um, 
so uh habe so habe i think dots underscore c favorite zelda game personal is ocarina of time i do like these questions you know guys this isn't just about bodybuilding this is about being a human there's another side to us all um we all have it and it's really nice where i've been able to connect on the discord lately and uh, obviously streaming and stuff with people that are interested in other things because obviously i have other interests as well and it's nice to see that a lot of you have and that we can connect on that uh, in regards to Zelda, I will say this, I, I didn't connect with many of the Zeldas after Majora's Mask as much as I did with Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. So I think those two for me hold a dear place in my heart. I think it's the era, the nostalgia, the age I was when I was playing them, um, how innovative they were. So I would have to say Ocarina of Time, just purely because it was the first experience of a, a game that really had a strong story and that you go from beginning truly to the end. Uh, you know, you start as a young boy, you become a man, you save the princess, you know, you felt like the Don, you felt like you were the absolute legend. And then Majora's Mask was obviously a great follow-up, very dark, very different, um, but uh, all in all a great game as well. So Ocarina of Time would definitely be my favourite. Um, Ash uh, Chand, 98. When will you be training with JP again? Um, I don't know. Listen, the thing with me and Jordan, yeah, we're like really good pals. But we're also very, very robotic and have a set way of living. We're both the kind of guys that we won't even have a meal 10 minutes late. <laughs> like, you know, we're pretty strict. And I think when it comes to like one of us having to travel to each other, it throws off our routine a touch. Uh, and we can do that now and then. But we are really quite messed up in the head where we don't like to do it that often. Um, we find it very easy to blame... Um, a change in our daily schedule for a lack of improvement like we're just bad we just got really big like not egos in the gym but like we just we're just set in our ways you know we've been that way for a long time since like you know the 2000s jordan obviously started competing i think one year after me you know 2009 he started i've been doing this since 2008 and we've been this way ever <laughs> ever since and uh we respect each other because we know we, we know what each other are like we love each other like as friends massively uh he's a great chap um i'll get down here at some point i need jordan to retire so then he's more flexible because he's even worse than me um by the way i just wanted to shout out this brand new this is from the uk store it's the tartan redcom one um i don't know how to call it it's just a regular t-shirt but it's tartan i don't know if this tartan was done because of the things that i wear in the gym or if they just did this anyway i'm i'm kind of I'm hoping that they did this because they've seen me wearing the hardcore clothing in the gym and they're like, yeah, it looks good. But anyway, this is, this is, they are, I don't know if they're in stock still, but they were on the Redcon 1 UK site, which is uk.redcon1.com. Um, obviously, James 20 saves you money. So uh, check it out if you wish to check that out. Okay, moving on. Let's get some more questions on the go. Done the plug. Um... Let's have a look. Um, Chris Tell Seven best exercise to build big adductors and hams. So quite honestly, adductors <laughs> use the adductor machine in my opinion. Um, obviously heavy pressing um, hits the kind of inner thigh a lot as well. But for hamstrings, I would say a lion curl is probably the be be all movement because John Meadows was probably the person I think had the most developed. Some of the most developed legs on the planet. Uh, whenever I watched any of his videos and he was giving information on what sort of movement's great for hamstring curls, he was a massive advocate of lion hamstring curl. Um, and I and I have to agree because proof's in the pudding, you know. When you look at someone who has such development on their lower body, you know, the success is left leaving clues and the clues are the exercises he does and he was a massive advocate of lion curl. I think a lot of us do it wrong because we go a bit too heavy perhaps and lose our form. So we probably just need to rein that in a little bit and make sure that we um, don't uh, use our hips too much, you know, that we brace, that we keep our, uh, our, our, our kind of like psoas area really pressed against that incline on the bench. If you have an incline line curl, if you have a flat one, then keeping the hips right down as well. Try not to use any glutes. Try to literally pull with the hamstring. Um, I think that's best exercise for me. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to move on to a second page. So this is from the White Sword. 
So many new bodybuilders say not to barbell squat, bench, deadlift. Are they partly pussies? Um, that's a very independent thing. Maybe a percentage of them are, maybe a percentage of them just don't get along with the movement. Uh, who am I to criticize? Um, I think if you can do the movements, then you should. Of course, I don't think you should shy away from something if you're certainly able to do it. Um, but there are many good variations. You can build massive and incredible legs using a hack squat. Um, you can build a great chest without barbell press. You can build, you know, um, a good back without deadlifts. It, they're not necessary, but I do think if you want to enjoy your training, and if you do like um, lifting weights, then they're free exercises that should be part of your routine. Um, I like all three. I get on with all three. I always have. For me, I can leave the session feeling very good in myself, knowing that I've performed any one of those because they're very taxing. But like I say, guys, you don't have to do them in order to build a, an Olympia level physique. Um, just, you know, approach it, try it, see how you feel. If it feels great, stick to it. If it feels like dog shit, maybe don't. Um, Gianni Garo Fallo, 23. Best bodybuilding training style when in a calorie surplus. E.g., train more frequently or increase volume. Um, I think when you're in your maximum kind of uh, your maximum calories, you do need to warrant having an appetite because obviously it's really hard to eat when you're pushing the food. So if training a little bit more frequently or if adding more sets or increasing the demand on your body is helping you facilitate such uptake of food, then do it. Like you want to basically keep the food going in as easy as possible. You know, if you're limiting the amount of work you do because you're trying to let the calories go further then you might find you actually get stuck. Um, which, you know, on paper, it sounds good to like be less mobile and let the calories do their thing. But you're not going to be able to hit the calories you could hit if you're creating the demand. And I always feel like, an, uh, you know, like a, a, an engine that's in need of fuel is better than uh, an engine that's not running very well being packed full of fuel. So I'd rather, I think like, I, the first approach is obviously my favorite approach. I always think create the demand, feed up, create demand, feed up, rather than, get lazy, overeat, get sluggish, all that shit. Like, me and Jordan talked about this quite frequently. He said if there's one thing that he could have changed when he was coming up is that he would have taken note of when he felt sluggish and was pushing the food to not continue pushing the food. So either scale back or somehow create a more, more demand. But I think it would have been impossible for someone like Jordan to create more demand because of his training um, is very, very taxing. So he probably would have been the kind of guy that would have been better off uh, just, you know, pulling back on food for a few weeks, allowing the body to readjust and then go forth again. That's kind of where I'm at right now, actually, with my own training. Um, I was hitting a lot of food um, and I've had to pull back. I hit like a peak body weight at like 310. Uh, I'm back down to like 304 or 305 now just from scaling back my carbohydrates, probably by about 50%. Uh, and I'll do that until I feel comfortable and then start the increase again. Um, you know, because I do create quite a lot of demand, but I don't, I'm not eating enough to do what I said there, where I, would, I could train every day, or <laughs> well, not even every day, but I train more frequently and create more demand. Now that my food's back, there's no chance. Um, I know I blabber, I go around in circles, I try and talk about everything on, on a particular subject, so I hope you appreciate that. Just to give you more insight on my overall look, rather than just the particular question that's been answered, uh, been asked. Um, Megatron... 05 on a scale of 1 to 10 i would rate your own genetics um in my head i'd say a 7 because they obviously do respond i'm fortunate enough to have been able to turn professional to win some shows uh and that takes having a certain level of genetic potential but then obviously not phil heath <laughs> so they're obviously not brandon curry um but that doesn't mean we don't continue to work and try because you can catch them guys off guard sometimes branch warren um you know, I still think he actually has an incredible genetics, but would you say he's as, as genetically gifted as, say, a Brandon? I don't know. Um, but he managed to beat, you know, Dexter, people like that, win two Arnold Classics and uh, create a great legacy. So even if your genetics are five, doesn't mean don't work. We can do this, you know. If you're, it's that old saying, in it? Like, hard work can beat talent. Obviously, if talent's working hard, then it's a different story, but a lot of time talent doesn't work hard, so do what you can. Um, this is Dr. Napalm. When eating a high amount of carbohydrates, do you take anything like insulin, met, or anything? I take berberine a lot. 
take berberine a lot and i have used obviously uh slin uh, in protocols for training for shows um never very high literally very low amounts uh single digit um i find that berberine you know i use like rpg from redcon one has been something that i throw in probably two or three mils a day um you know ala rala chromium um cinnamon um yeah and berberine you know that combination of all of those ingredients seems to do the job um i would say you can get a lot out of that i don't use met i have never used met uh, i know it's very common nowadays to use that um my own studies on it have kind of said that vitamin b uptake is obviously interfered with which um i think b12 in particular which is just something i've looked at and i thought well, okay maybe it's not worth it uh, you guys could probably tell me more on that, but that's just my own, from my own reads. Um, yeah, and some people, it messes the stomach up, from what I understand as well, which is something I don't want, because my stomach's already having a hard time when I'm eating the amount of foods I'm eating. Um, Andy Dolan. How do you think Brett will do? He's looking unreal. Keep up the amazing lifting. Brett's going to do very well. He's, I think he's top two at this show. I think him and Brandon are right up there. Brett's got a crazy lower half as well, so like it'd be interesting to see how the lower half stands next to Brandon, because we all know Brandon's like got one of the best upper bodies in bodybuilding, and his legs are good. Don't get me wrong, from the front they're crazy, from the side they're crazy. I think when we turn them around, Brandon's got quite small glutes, uh, and some, versus someone like Brett whose glutes are very dug out and quite big. So uh, I'm interested to see how they look from the rear shots, because Brett gets really good condition as well, and he's got a lot of muscle. Let's not let's not disregard how much muscle Brett has. So, I'm I'm going top two. I'm going top two. I think that's very very possible. Um, Richard Alex nineteen ninety one. Would you ever do your own podcast? Uh, yes, of course I would. Um, that's why I kind of stay behind the microphone a lot and do these things because it's all just me kind of practicing. Uh, I used to obviously do the size game. That was one of the first bodybuilding podcasts. Um, me and Banji, and then we obviously got. The juggernaut involved, very popular. I had guests from Evan Centapani, Aaron Singerman, um, uh, Kerry Kays, wow, uh, Latoya Watts. Um, Jesus God, who else do we have? Like, I can't even remember the amount of guests we had. We had a lot of good guests. We were like the first podcast really getting guests on, um, other than maybe a couple of others. I think, um, I think the guys at like Advices Radio were like first in there, and then. Um, there were a few people like Adam McVeigh, I think, and people like that were doing them, but we were like the British one, and we really had some good guests. Banji built a very good podcast. That was all his efforts, and I, I highly respect him for that. And um, I think that podcast paved the way for bodybuilding and bollocks, because obviously Luke got involved in podcasts on our one, and then that obviously showed how he good how good he was behind the camera and on the mic, and then he obviously was approached by Fuad to team up and. You know, then that's led to me being able to be over there and whatnot. So it's kind of in the blood because I've been doing it for a while um, without meaning to do it. It's just been something that's on the side of the bodybuilding. So, yeah, definitely, um, definitely something I'm looking into. Obviously, I was going to do the shed cast. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, favorite physiques from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s and current. This is Road Nights Day. Um 70s, uh, I think 70s, I'll say Serge Nubray, 80s, Lee Haney, 90s, I would have said Dorian, but then Ronnie Coleman's best was 1998, so I'll say Ronnie, uh, 1000s, Justin Compton, no, no, because that's 1000s, probably like Evan, maybe 2009, New York Pro, um, and then the 2010s or whatever, I would say something like Justin. And then current, uh, probably Brett or someone like that. I really like Brett. I think Brett looks great. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, JS, pardon. Um, favorite scaler. So, obviously, guys, I used to do aggressive inline when I was younger. I was a uh, keen, avid skater boy who wanted to be a professional in that way before i had dreams of bodybuilding way before i had dreams of weightlifting this was pre-boxing pre everything i did other than uh skate so uh yeah i used to do that I used to buy a magazine called the daily bread um 
think there's one called like Grind as well from the local sweet shop. Um, and I used to sit there and dream, sit there and dream. I used to spend 12 hours a day on a pair of skates practicing tricks. Uh, I got okay and then puberty hit and I grew taller and saw girls and things changed. But um, it was a major part of my life. And uh, I had some favorite skaters at the time for sure. One of my favorites was probably uh, a fella called Ratchard Johnson. Because I was a little bit like, not a rude boy, but I used to like baggy clothes. There was like two types of skaters. Ones that wore jeans that were tight. Uh, and then there was ones that wore like baggy cargo bottoms and had their skates loose. And I was the second type. Because uh, I used to skate like around local park called Royston. And I used to go to a skate park in Croydon. Uh, I used to go to a place called Dickeridge. So I went around a few places. One in London, uh, which used to be called PlayStation, which isn't now. And the guys that I looked to, and I really liked their style, were the guys that were dressed a little bit like Rude Boys. And I think that's why I, I, I liked it, because I was very keen on hip-hop. Like, Tupac was, like, my favourite thing as a child. Like, I, I listened to Tupac religiously. Um, you know, I, I, didn't never, I never didn't have a Tupac song in my head. So uh, I think that's why I was kind of into that kind of style of dressing, style of skating, and whatnot. And grinding was my favourite thing. So, Ratcha Johnson, but then you have to name like Brian Sheema because I had his skates. Uh, Albert Huey, I had a pair of his skates. Uh, obviously, Aaron Feinberg. You know, these are all the old school guys. So, they're probably not even around anymore. So, it's probably uh, it's probably not even worth me answering. But that is my honest answer. So, yeah. Um, Vix. Uh, Vix. Numo Han. Training videos with Ian. Ian. Me and Ian, I've seen Ian's story the other day. Ian's like, he'd love to train. I'd love to train. Obviously, I'm on the other side of the planet right now. Uh, but we have very similar training styles, very similar strength. Um, it would be a great session. It would be a great session. I know it would. Ian could probably be like the best training partner in the world for someone like me. But just logistically, it's not ideal, is it? Because obviously, I'm sitting here in, well, I'm in New York right now. But I'll be in London most days of the week. And um, yeah. So it makes it very difficult. Makes it very difficult. But yeah, I would love to. I would love to train. Oops, sorry. Budged my. Oh no, you saw where I really was there. Oops. Uh, anyway, moving on. Next question. Uh, this is Brad Sean P. Thoughts on. Just got to refocus my camera. There we go. Thoughts on ashwagandha for natural bodybuilding. I think ashwagandha is good for all bodybuilding. Uh, I've said this before. Natural or not, uh, it's good for stress management. I also believe it's pretty good for libido. So, uh, yeah, very good. Um, have you ever, this is from Singhi, have you ever used BP157? There's loads of people telling me to use it for injury. I've got chest hair. I haven't used it. I think Nathan Diasha done a an update video after his bicep tear. Um, I think he did say, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he mentioned using it. Um, so it clearly works because his arm looks like he never had a tear and he did have one. So uh, there's, there's definitely benefits. I've never used it. I've never had really an injury that warranted it. But I've heard a lot of people in the past use it to much success. So BP157 is a very, I don't like peptides. Listen, I'm like, peptides are shit. But for injuries, that peptide seems to be one that is actually worth using. And probably the only one, because a lot of them are dog shit. Um, Terry Zactil. I would love to know what you eat in a day, macros. I've done this like many times on my Instagram. Like I just record my food for the day. Maximum food I was eating was probably about five and a half, six thousand calories. Um, I was eating like 110 grams of carbs per meal. Uh, I was having 50 grams intra-workout. 25 grams pre 50 grams post um and then protein's always around about 350 i've worked it out before and posted it below if you go through my instagram you'll see there's at least one post on there where i've worked out my daily calories macros um on average so you only have to scroll through and have a look and you'll see uh on there um yeah uh rob holden hi do you do muscle worship i don't I don't. How much you paying, bro? How much you paying me, man? If it's six figures, email me. Anyway, let's move on from that subject. Uh, this is funny, like MB Selly thoughts on trend. 
Like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> like, <laughs> don't use it. <laughs> Unless you're on the Olympia stage um, and you might might win a check for 400k, don't bother with that shit. Avoid it. There's a lot safer things you can use and a lot better for your health. Um, Coach Magnus, where do I get the sleeveless flannel shirts? Hardcore clothing. Uh, it's my friend Anth Bales' his company. Um, they're on Instagram. It's hard and coarse, but with a K. They do sleeveless and they do regular as well. So get on there. There is a possibility that I might do something with Anth at some point, just for like a little limited edition. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out. Uh, Testo Tang. How do you train abs, sets, reps, uh, and movements do you do? So typically I train abs at the end of every session. Uh, and we do um, some form of leg raise, so like a hip tilt. So something that brings my hips up. So line, line, leg, uh, line leg raise, hanging leg raise, reverse crunch. Um, three sets of like 15 to 20. And then we follow that with some form of crunch where I'm bringing my uh, upper body to my hip. Uh, so regular crunch, crunch machine, rope crunch, cable crunch. You know, those kind of things. Again, three times... 20 really and uh, using a weight that isn't too heavy that it's like a, the form goes out the window but heavy enough to get really good stimulation um do, 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 do. william flicked um so he said what's the top five ooh, ooh, ooh. top five video games Ooh, is it a, are you talking about franchise or particular video games? If we're particular video games, I'm going to have to just, like, I don't, this is no order, but let's say Final Fantasy VII, uh, Resident Evil 2, the original, um, Bloodborne, uh, maybe Metal Gear Solid 3. Shit, I need one more. What do we do? We need one more. What do we put here, guys? Um, Ghost of Tsushima that was good let's put that there get a bit of light maybe coming from there like if I do that then it stops the green too much light coming from my window because it's daytime anyway that's top 5 games no particular order um, really I think uh, Lee Joro best carb source meal to eat before bed if you go to the gym around 4am so my opinion on this is it doesn't really matter what carbs you have before bed. My opinion would be in the morning, what do you do? So if you're training first thing, I would suggest if you take a pre-workout, to put at least 25 grams of cluster bomb, which is cluster dextrin, in that shake to prevent you from being in a, well, basically not having any carbs in you. So we want that. And then I would actually suggest carrying that over into your intro with some essential aminos. 25 grams again maybe and then whatever aminos you have and then post i would eat an easy simple digesting carb like rice cream of rice you know something quite fast um maybe a banana or two and even some whey protein or chicken or lean fish something like that so it's more that i would suggest that you have some carbohydrates in liquid form going in before you hit the gym so you've got something in you because your food's digested overnight and it's pretty much gone i know a lot of people are like yeah you got it and it's gonna help you fuel the next day but depends how good like if you digest food quick like you're gonna feel empty regardless but i would suggest um doing that having the shake before da -da 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 -da. um uncommon what was your strength level when you started training shit i remember the day when i couldn't even press a 60 kilo bench press. I couldn't even do 20 kilo aside when I was when I was 14 years old. I was in a garage trading with my friends and I had no no strength at all. Um, I wasn't born strong. Just saying. I really wasn't born strong. Uh, so you've seen the lifts I can do now. That's all nurtured. So there's really no excuse for people not to get strong unless they have some sort of hindrance in disability or you know something wrong with them that doesn't allow their body to get strong. It's possible. Just believe in yourself, I promise you. Uh, do, 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 Scotty Large, can you progress to the next level without increasing your lift load? Uh, you can, but it's very unlikely that you will. Uh, this is going to be genetic dependent. 
even those who aren't really focusing on progressing their lifts still have progressed their lifts over the years. You can look at people like Dexter Jackson. He was still benching four plates in his prime. Like, although he would never be like, yeah, hypertrophy training, progressive overload wasn't really his approach. I imagine he'd say that anyway. Uh, it still pretty much was the basis, even though it wasn't his main focus. So I think it's going to be very difficult to progress without getting stronger because if you get stronger, create more demand, eat more, get bigger. Um, you need to stress that body and it's very hard to stress it without increasing load. You can do other things, but you might run out of options. So, yeah. Uh, Lucas Chody. Does it matter when you go to sleep if you're still getting seven hours? Uh, I would say get eight. Seven's not quite enough. And I would say, it, I, don't, I don't know, it depends what you, your lifestyle's like. Because if your lifestyle's like mine, where a lot of what you do is online um, and you don't have to be in a particular place at a particular time, the not stressing is probably actually a good thing. So if you're someone that gets up a bit late and you're not like, oh, this is horrible, I'm up late, this is terrible, it's probably going to benefit you being that relaxed. So for, for example, if I get up at like 8 a.m. one day, but 10 the next, but I've still had 8 asleep, I don't moan. I'm just like, okay, because I haven't got to be somewhere in particular. Whereas obviously if you have, then that's a stress that you need to address and that you need to be on point and make sure you don't get stressed by being organized. So it's lifestyle dependent. If you have the freedom and the option, don't stress. If you don't, be organized so you don't stress. <laughs> so yeah, there's two sides to that coin. Definitely two sides to that coin. Um, Ian Sleaf, when you train legs, are you wiped out for the rest of the day? Depends. Sometimes. Not always. I know when I've had one of them sessions, I know when I haven't. And I'm not going to lie to you. It'll be like every session is one where I've taken myself to the point where I can't function for the rest of the day. But then I will also say it's surprising. Sometimes the ones that don't feel that hard are the ones that mess you up the most. So, uh, yeah. It's 50-50, man. It's 50-50. Uh, Chris Barato. Elden Ring, what are your thoughts about it so far? It's a dope game. I like it. I think Elden Ring's pretty sick. I love that it's so expansive and that the world's massive and that it doesn't really give you a hand. You've just got to figure it out for yourself. Most games out there are like, let's go this way, follow this, follow that. And this is one where it's like, here you go then. Find out for yourself. And that's what we need. Um, so I don't know how to say this. Pi Tropalo. Tri Papalo. I know anyway. Total. Stack for GI health and digestion. Uh, a bit of GI juice. Um, RPG I like using, like I say, like I like using um, GDAs because I feel like they help my digestion. But mainly, really, staying active. You know, go for walks. Uh, drink plenty of water. Train hard. Um, don't overeat. That's the best, best thing for GI health as well, alongside taking some supplements. Um, let's have a look. Got two more questions we'll do. Um, Alfred Herp, things you wish you knew when you started your first off season. So I'll say this, check the channel. There's a video, it's called the things I wish I knew when I started. That will give you all the answers. That will give you all the answers, all the secrets that aren't secrets. That's the video. I promise you check that one out. Let me know what you think. Would love to hear your opinion on that. Uh, how to lateral raise without working the traps. Um, Sapezus. You're always going to hit a little bit of trap, but really it's about not going too heavy. Um, and I would say probably try using a cable instead so that you have that initiation from the the, 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 latch, uh, the medial head from the get-go. Because obviously if you use a cable, it's going to, um, as soon as you push your hand out to the side, your delt's under tension. Uh, and then you can actually stop a little bit short of coming all the way up. So you can actually come to like here rather than like here. And it's going to be all dealt. It's when you start coming like to here that you start to hit a bit of trap, mostly, I've noticed. Um, but don't go too heavy is the main thing. If you're, in, if you're hitting trap, a lot of the time you're just going a bit too heavy that you've got to shrug it up. Um, last question from Steve Andrews. How long would you stay at maintenance after a cut before going into a growing phase? Um, I don't really stay at maintenance. So after a show, I tend to creep the calories up immediately, whether I'm on cycle or not. Um, but I just try to do it slowly that I don't turn into a fat mess. I don't really, there's not often that I keep calories steady. Um, the only time I really do that is when I've reached peak off season and I can't eat anymore because I feel like that's the only time that things should stagnate. Um, 
and then even then I scale back. So I don't know. I don't do maintenance calories. I'm not like a lot of these coaches. Uh, I know that it's good and it works for a lot of people, but it's not how I approach things. I'd have some come out of a show. I'd have them increase their calories uh, periodically, even if it's minimal. And I mean like minimal, like it could be 100 calories a week. But I would do that because I just like to pyramid up and slowly creep the food back in so they get back to being strong, healthy, uh, fed, energized, and ready to grow. So um, yeah. Right, guys, that was fun. It was about half an hour, just over rambling off to you all sorry i know it's a bit blah, 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 blah. but these videos are cool i like doing these these are basic stuff for me it's just nice to share a bit of uh, my own experience and like i say these videos are just my own experience so you can come in and be like that's wrong this is wrong that's fine in my opinion it's not but we all have opinions and we're entitled to them so hopefully this helps a few of you uh please get liking get subscribing share if you like if there's any friends that want to know more about bodybuilding or approaching it um Please show them this video, you know, this is what it's all about, guys. So, God bless you all. Um, that's me on the stream. We're on uh, Twitch as the shed is here. Uh, join the Discord, the link is in my Instagram bio. Come in there, talk to the community. It's a great community. People do like little physique updates in there, talk about each other's training, talk about gaming, uh, talk about all things, really. So, it's just a cool place to be. Uh, I pop in there, obviously, occasionally as well and have a look and interact. So, it's really cool. Um, yeah, so thank you. I'll see you soon. Peace from me. God bless. Good night. See you later, guys.